Hello. Today in class, we're going to cover uh, different influences on our health and risk factors and decision making. So today, when you click into the slides, well, I'm going to review the slides that uh, we should we should be learning about today. And remember, you always have access to this. You can always go back over them. But I'd like to read through them with you as well. Okay, here we go. Okay, so again, our slides today are going to cover health influences, risk factors, health goals, and decide, which is all about decision making. Okay, so first, let's talk about some of the different factors that can influence a person's health. Um, there's a list here for you. Heredity, environment, media, technology, healthcare, and behavior. Be sure you understand how each of these factors can influence your health and be able to identify some examples for each of the factors list, listed on the left. We'll go over them one at a time. First is heredity. How does heredity influence a person's health? Well, heredity means all of the traits that are passed down biologically from parent to child. Sometimes we inherit traits that can affect our health. <clears throat> for example, our skin color might affect our risk for skin cancer, especially if we are born with very pale, light, light colored skin, uh, lots of freckles. We tend to have a higher risk of skin cancer like I do. Women inherit a higher risk for developing breast cancer. Men can develop breast cancer as well, but genetically, women are more likely to. So can you do anything about this? Can you control your genes? No, but we can lower our overall risk from heredity by avoiding other risk factors. For example, if I have um, a skin color that is more likely to uh, get burned and result in skin cancer, I can make sure that I wear sunscreen and I can wear long sleeves and I can avoid the sun during those peak hours. When it comes to breast cancer, I can make sure that I don't smoke because when I smoke, that increases my risk of breast cancer. And I can eat a healthy diet and I can exercise and I can um, maintain a healthy weight and do all those other things that we know will help reduce our risk of cancer. All right, so that's heredity. Next up is our environment. And environment is composed of two different parts, our physical environment and our social environment. So the physical and social conditions that surround a person make up your environment. So your physical environment is probably what you think about. Uh, it's your indoor and outdoor surroundings. So think about things like poor air, air quality. A few weeks back, we had all the wire, wildfires burning and we had horrible air quality. Um, or sometimes we're exposed to disease-causing organisms or loud noises, radiation from the sun, being in a smoky room. That's all part of your physical environment. Do you have control over any of those? Maybe if it's a bad air day, you can make sure you stay inside. You can wash your hands and take all those necessary precautions to avoid um, getting a disease and illness. You can wear earplugs for loud noise. So I can't change the fact that maybe today's a poor air quality day, but I can still do some things to be healthier. So that's physical environment. Now your social environment would be all the people you spend time with. So this might involve things like peer pressure, which could be positive. We tend to think of peer pressure as being bad. It could be bad. Um, how about different cultural uh, behaviors that affect our health. In some cultures, for example, it's considered, um, I guess, inappropriate to uh, express your emotions. Instead, you should keep it all inside. Well, we know that that's not really a healthy behavior. Uh, make sure you know what that term culture is. It's just the beliefs and patterns of behavior that a group of people will share, and then they pass it on from one generation to the next. So this, uh, your culture could be part of a, um, an ethnic group, um, or even here at school, we have a school culture, right? Um, there's some activities that have been passed on from the kids that were here before you, like Fight Song Friday. 
right? Can, can you control any of these things in our social environment? Um, yes, you can. You can control whether you give in to things like peer pressure, or whether you choose to express your emotions or not. All right, next is media and technology. And they have a huge, inf they can have a huge influence on our health. So media and technology, I'm thinking things like, you know, social media and news articles that we watch or read, magazine articles that we read. So they could have a positive effect. They could have a negative effect on our health. Um, we just need to make sure it's a good source, right? We can always get useful information from media, but sometimes it's misleading. So just be careful of the source of your media. And then when it comes to technology and media, how much time are we spending there? Um, if we're just sitting in front of a screen all day, like I am right now, um, obviously that limits my social interaction with people, that limits my activity level. And again, I could be receiving some misleading information. A lot of times news articles look really interesting, um, but it actually might be just somebody's opinion or an advertisement for a product. So be sure to check the source. All right, healthcare can also influence our health. So just think about um, when you get sick, do you have a doctor you go to? Can you afford it? Um, is it nearby? Are they open when you need to go there? All of those things can influence somebody's ability to get to a doctor or not. If you live um, in a rural area, there might not be a doctor uh, within several miles. So it might take some time to get to a doctor. That could influence a person's health. And then the last one is your behavior. So you have total control over this one. The decisions you make and the actions you take have the greatest impact on your health. For example, uh, you decide whether you're going to smoke or not. You decide whether you wear a seatbelt, whether you jump off a cliff into the river, whether you exercise or not. Sometimes these behaviors become so routine, they become automatic. We don't even think about them. For myself, putting my seatbelt on is a habit. That's what a habit is. It's a behavior that is done so often that you don't even think about it anymore. It's an automatic behavior. Um, as soon as I sit in the car, I buckled up. Whether I'm driving to the store or just moving my, you know, backing my car out of the garage, I'm buckled up. It's a habit. I don't even think about it anymore. We can have good habits and we can have bad habits. All right, you need to know what the term risk factor means. A risk factor is any action or condition that increases the likelihood of injury, disease, or any other negative outcome. All right, and I would like you to go back into the slides and watch this little video. Um, and imagine you're, you're being um, asked to do what these girls are asking people to do in the situation. And how would you handle that? Is the risk worth it? So take a minute, you can pause the screencast and go watch that video. Is it worth it? All right, so these are three strategies to help you evaluate a risk factor. So consider the short-term and long-term co consequences. Decide whether you control, you can control the risk factor or not and analyze the possible benefits and risks of a decision. So how about that situation in the video? If you were being um, approached by the girls, what would be some short-term consequences or long-term consequences? Short-term, um, I don't know. You might feel good, you might feel bad, you might feel guilty about what you did. Long-term, if you get in trouble, if you get caught and get in trouble, that could um, stay with you for a while. Can you control anything in this risk factor? In this situation? I don't know. What do you think? Could you control anything? I'm not sure. And then um, number three, analyze the possible benefits and risks of the decision. So in this scenario, the girls were offering some money to go in and buy the product. Um, is it worth it? Is that little extra cash worth it? Is that benefit worth it? worth what could happen, the consequences. So th those are some things that you would need to work for work through when you're faced with um, a possible risky situation. All right, taking responsibility for your health. Do you guys know what the leading cause of death 
is for young people, people your age. There's three leading causes of death. And motor vehicle injuries or death from motor vehicle injuries is always number one for young people. Homicide is number two and suicide is number three. Number two and three, sometimes those two go back and forth, but motor vehicle crashes are always number one. So do you have any control over those? You do. You have a lot of control. I'm gonna go back real quick, but um, it says, what are the leading causes of death for young people all related to, they're all related to behaviors. So I'm gonna go back real quick and talk about that. Oops. Okay, motor vehicle injuries. Most of the time when, we, when people say they were in a car accident, it's not an accident. An accident means that nobody was at fault. When it comes to car crashes, almost always someone is at fault. So you have control over your speed, are you following the rules, the laws of the road? Uh, are you buckled up? Are you sober? Um, are you giving in to any distractions in your car? Are you being a defensive driver? Are you um, alert or tired? Uh, right? So you have a lot of control over your driving. Second, homicide. That means that somebody kills you. Do you have control over that? Again, sometimes it, it happens, like drive-by shootings where you could not do anything to prevent that. But a lot of times you can. Think about the places where you choose to hang out, the time of day or night you choose to hang out, who you are spending time with, activities that you're participating in, um, legal and illegal activities that you might be participating in that could result in homicide. And then, of course, number three, suicide is completely, you know, a person chooses to do that to themselves. Many things might lead up to that point, And we will talk much more about suicide in our mental health unit. I don't want to just gloss over it. We will come back to that topic. Okay, so those top causes of death for young people are related to your behaviors. So do you have any behaviors that are putting your health at risk? I'm not asking you to respond. It's not an assignment, but just think about it. Are there some things that are a little risky you could work on changing? Maybe it's time to set a goal to eliminate some of those health risk factors. All right, and if you did, did want to set a health goal, um, these are three steps to go through. Uh, <clears throat> the first step is gaining awareness. I'm going to use myself as an example. Several years ago, I was at the doctor and just for something routine and um, they, as they always do, they took my blood pressure and they said, whoa, your blood pressure is really high. Is it always high? And I don't, don't think it was. So um, they took it a few more times. They tried to calm me down. They took it a few more times and suddenly I'm faced with this awareness that I might have high blood pressure. So that's the first step. Recognize that there is even a problem. And how did I realize that? By going to the doctor. Sometimes we realize things ourselves, and we do our own investigations, but it is important to get a proper diagnosis. Don't, you don't want to treat yourself. So that's the first step, gaining awareness that there's even an issue to deal with. The second step is gaining knowledge, learning about the problem so that you can either prevent it or treat it. So I, I talked to the doctor when they told me I had, I had high blood pressure, they gave me their advice. They told me what I should do. Um, I also did my own research and learned maybe um, some be behaviors I should stop or some things I could start doing, like maybe cutting back on caffeine, maybe work on some relaxation activities, things like that, <clears throat> which is all great, but you actually have to do something with that knowledge. And that's step three building and applying health skills. You need to have health skills to apply healthy knowledge to your life. Knowledge is one thing, but applying them is where you're gonna see some results. All right, the last section for today is on decision-making, and we will get to our decide process in a few minutes. All right, decisions, decisions. What is a decision? A decision is, the selection of an action from a variety of options. It's making a choice. We make choices every day. Sometimes they're very small decisions we make, small choices, sometimes they're real big decisions. Sometimes they are gonna have a big impact on our life. 
Sometimes they won't. Should I use the blue pen or, or the pink pen? It's not really going to make much difference, right? But sometimes they have very big decisions. All right, here's a quick video from Kid President. So you can watch this back in the slideshow. Um, I'm not going to play through it right here in the screencast. So it's just about making tough decisions. All right, you need to know what a consequence is. What's a consequence? It's the outcome. It's the results of action, and they can either be positive or negative. Some observations about decisions. Well, they have short-term effects or long-term effects. As you get older, it seems like decisions get harder. And as those decisions get harder, the outcomes become more extreme. Like right now at your age, should you get a job or not? Well, you still live at home. Your parents might be paying for things. Do you want a job? Can you fit it into your schedule? Can you get there? Might not be as big of a decision as when you're my age. Um, should I stay at this job? Should I apply for a new job? Should I try to switch to a different school? Um, might have much bigger outcomes, right? What if I want to quit? Can I afford to quit? Can I move to a different school district? Do they pay as much? So a lot bigger things to think about. All right, and when we talk about teens making decisions, remember that the, the teenage brain is not fully developed until at least mid-20s. Some studies are even showing late 20s. And the last part of your brain to develop is the prefrontal cortex. And that's where we make our good decisions and we work on problem solving and reasoning and controlling our behaviors. So it's kind of normal that teens don't always make the best choices, right? Because your brain is not fully developed. We'll come back to this topic when we talk about um, substance abuse, drugs, and alcohol. Because just just for a little sidestep here, imagine your brain is still full, not your brain is still developing, and then you put in your body a substance that alters your brain and how it works, and so you can really do some damage to your brain while it's still developing. So just keep that in mind. We'll come back to that in unit four. All right. Let's talk about making good decisions. And today when, we, when we're talking about decisions, we're talking about not the blue pen or the pink pen, but big decisions that could possibly have a big impact on your life. So we always want to consider the decision with our values. Does it fit with our beliefs, the beliefs most important to us? Consider the decision with your goals. Will this action take me closer to where I want to be in the future? Well, in order to figure that out, you probably have to think about the positive and negative consequences. So what could happen good if I make this decision? And what are some bad things that could happen? And then after you make a decision, you have to evaluate it. Was this the best choice for me? How did it work out? What did I learn from this decision? In our class, we're going to cover, excuse me, we're going to cover the decide model for decision making. So decide, each letter of decide is going to stand for one of the steps. Decide is a process that can help you make difficult decisions. The process teaches you to identify your alternatives, to think about your possible outcomes of a decision, and consider your values. Remember the values, your values are those beliefs that are most important to you. It's lunchtime. All right, so these are the steps of decide. You can see if you go down the list vertically here, it spells out decide. So the first step, D, is to define what the problem is. Second, E, explore the alternatives. So the different ways we could handle this problem. Third, third step is C, consider the consequences. So for each of our possible alternatives, what could happen, good and bad? Fourth step is I, identify your values. What beliefs are most important to you when it comes to this topic? D, decide and act. What would you do? You've got to make a decision. And last step, E, evaluate the results. How did it work out? How did it go? What did you learn? If you were faced with this situation again, would you make the same choice? 
Okay, so we're gonna go through this scenario together. Alex and Joe have ended their six month relationship with each other. You are Alex's best friend and have always had a crush on Joe. You're seriously thinking about asking Joe out on a date. It's a big decision. So step one, D, define the problem. So what is the specific decision that needs to be made? I guess the decision is, should you ask Joe out or not? Step two is to explore the alternatives. So what choices do you have? So we could probably come up with a lot of different scenarios or a lot of different alternatives, um, but let's narrow it down to these three. We could ask Joe out, we could not ask Joe out, or we could talk to Alex first and see how Alex feels about this. Okay, so those are our three alternatives. Now for each one, consider the consequence, consequences. What are the possible pros and cons for each of those alternatives? Okay, so for option one, we're gonna ask Joe out. What are some positive things that could happen? What are some negative things? Well, positive could be that um, maybe the relationship ends up working out great. Uh, one con could be that Alex doesn't wanna be friends with us anymore. For option two, if I don't ask Joe out, what could happen positively? Well, maybe Alex and I still have a real good relationship. But negative, maybe I maybe I kind of hold a grudge against against Alex, or maybe I um, miss out on this great potential for a relationship. For option three, I'm gonna talk to Alex first. What would be positives and negatives? Well, positive is um, I'm going to be honest and upfront, get it all out there in the open, and I can get feedback from Alex. Um, a con or a disadvantage, a negative, could be that uh, Alex still might get mad at me for even thinking this way about Joe. Um, maybe Alex tells me, no, I don't want you to, to, to ask Joe out. Just, those are just a couple of ideas. So you would think of, you would brainstorm as many positives and negatives for each possible option. Step four, I, is for identifying your values, the beliefs most important to you. And you should really think about this when you're making any big decision. Is this decision going to help you reach future goals and be in alignment with your values, with your beliefs? So on this screen here, there's just a list of life values. You can look through them. Some of them might be very, um, uh, relevant to this scenario or any other scenario. Let me just look through real quick. How about, um, let's see, how about thoughtfulness? So if I ask Joe out without even thinking about um, how Alex might feel about this, I'm not being very thoughtful right, to either one of them. So if thoughtfulness is really important to me, then maybe, you know, I'm not going to ask Joe out, or at least I'm going to talk to Alex first. So that's just an example of how you might incorporate your values with this scenario. Step five, decide and act. Which one would you choose? Would you ask Joe out? Would you not ask Joe out? Or would you talk to Alex first and then make your decision? You got to do one of these three. What would you do? And step six, E, is for evaluating your results. So how did it go? Are you happy with the results? Can you change your mind now? If you could go back in time or you're faced with this situation in the future, would you make the same choice? Did I have enough information to make a good decision? What did I learn from this? So again, those are the six steps for making a healthy decision, a big decision that might have some impact on your life. Define the problem, explore the alternatives. For each alternative, consider the consequences, positive and negative. Identify your values, 
decide and act, and then lastly, evaluate the results. Okay, let's just, you're, you're at home today, so let's just talk about this, think about this scenario, how you might work through each of those steps. You have 89.7% in math class, and your teacher does not round up. You have been studying like mad for your math final, but you're really having trouble focusing. During break, you text your friend Bo, who is diagnosed with ADHD, about your problem. Bo offers you some of his medication, claiming he's no, he knows it'll help you focus. And he shared it, his meds with other people before, and it's helped them. Your school has a really strict policy against drugs but you really want an A in class. Excuse my typo there. What do you do? I don't know. So you would go through each of those steps. What's the problem? You've been offered drugs to help you focus. Do you take those drugs or not? What are your alternatives? Taking the drug, not taking the drug, maybe finding some other way to help you improve your math grade or other things to help you focus better. For each of those alternatives, what could happen, positive and negative? What are your values when it comes to this situation, getting a good grade? What are your values there? Uh, what would you do? And then evaluate it. How did it work, uh, work out? What did you learn from it? All right, two assignments for you to complete today. Um, on Schoology, in the um, folder for today, there is an assessment for you to complete that covers the health risk factors and decide. It's a review assignment. And then there is a decide review, uh, I'm sorry, a decide worksheet. So I give you a different situation to work through. I also give you a, an example. So if I go to Schoology, I'll do this real quick. If I go to Schoology real quick, and go into our class, right under the agenda in our unit one folder, you will find an, a folder called health influences, risk factors, and health goals and decide. Okay, um, I will link the slides in here as well. Um, it's also, the slides are also linked on the agenda. Um, this is the review activity and then your decide worksheet assignment. So when you click on the assignment, um, I have provided a, an example for you. So I give you a different situation that we haven't come up with or we haven't reviewed yet, and it's all filled out for you. Your assignment today, I'll make sure it's linked properly, but the assignment today is with a different example and all of these colored boxes are blank. So you're gonna work through the assignment um, with this scenario, thinking about your values and filling in all those boxes on your own. But please go ahead and refer to this as an example to help you out. All right, and as always, if you have any questions, please send me an email. All righty, guys, good luck.